Hello everyone and welcome again to Nuddle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials on topics you might be interested in. My name is Sava and today we're discussing the Lung Box and Box PSQ tests for autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, that is ARSH. We have already got two separate videos where we have discussed the Q tests, either Lung Box or Box Pierce, in application to autocorrelation detection, and we have already got the videos for the T test, F test, and the chi squared test for Arsh heteroscedasticity. But you can actually apply the logic of the Q statistic and the sum of squared autoregressive betas to detect Arsh heteroscedasticity in exactly the same way. The idea for this video has been suggested by YPAV Agrawal, so thank you very much for the suggestion. Without further ado, we've got, just to do something different, a data set on daily silver prices and silver returns, and we've got around a thousand data points. And today we're going to apply the Lung Box and Box Pierce Q tests to detect whether there is Arsh heteroscedasticity in silver returns. To start with, we just have to calculate the average return, so that to then calculate residuals and squared residuals. So just calculating the average return day by day, and we get 0.11%. Now we can calculate the residuals by just subtracting the average return from every single observation, and we're locking the mean because we want it to stay the same. Then we bottom bracket it all the way down and get daily residuals, daily abnormal sil silver returns. And then we can calculate squared residuals that would represent volatility in our heteroscedasticity test. So we just square the respective residuals and bottom by click the formula all the way down. Now for the application of the Q test, either Lung box or box pierce, we need to specify the number of lags. And you can calculate the Q statistic for any number of lags possible, I mean reasonably possible. So here let's just settle on three. Now we need to lag our squared residual by one, so refer to the first day in the second day and all the way down, then refer to the first day on the third day and bottom bracket right all the way down, and then lag our squared residual by three days. And then, just as with the loom box test for autocorrelation, we need to fill in the missing observations with zeros, so that we do not reduce the number of the degrees of freedom for our tests and auxiliary regressions. Then we need to figure out what is our sample size to figure out the respective Q statistics. To do that, we can just count the number of observations in terms of our residuals or returns or squared residuals, it doesn't matter here, and we get 989. That number would be then used to calculate all of the respective chi-squared statistics. Then we need to run an auxiliary regression, regressing the squared residuals onto lagged squared residuals up to a specified lag length. Here we've got three, so we would have a 4x5 uh, array, we would have a constant, uh, unconditional variance here, and three arch terms. So we can select a 4x5 array and apply the linest function selecting the squared residual as our dependent variable and lagged squared residuals as our independent variables then we specify that we need the constant the unconditional variance in that case and we need the additional statistics then we close the brackets uh, press shift control enter and we get our regression output and here we're interested in three autoregressive coefficients for volatility for first, second, and third lags. Here we can already uh, identify that, unlike in the previous estimation, we have quite material coefficients for second and third lag, unlike in the case for the S&P 500 returns that we have noted in the previous video on the ARSH test. So here it might be actually possible that more lags are relevant for volatility modeling for autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. So here, the Lung Box or Box Pierce tests, Q tests to be short, are more applicable. 
here we can just simply calculate the box pairs and link box stats. So let's start with the box pairs stat as the easiest of the two. So here we need just to multiply the number of observations, 989 in our case, by the squared sum of the autoregressive coefficients for volatility across all lags. And this statistic would be distributed according to a chi-squared distribution with the number of the degrees of freedom that would be equal to lag length, in our case, 3. So to calculate the box pair stat, we need to multiply the sample size, the number of observations, n, by the squared sum of autoregressive betas. So those three coefficients got from the auxiliary regression output. And we enforce the formula and get around 35. And to calculate the p-value, we can just apply the right-tailed chi-squared distribution, input the chi-squared statistic as the x-value, and bearing in mind this formula, input 3, the lag length, as the degrees of freedom. Close the brackets, enforce the formula, and get a p-value very close to 0. It means that the probability that there is no harsh heteroplasticity in that setting is ridiculously low, so it means that it's very likely that silver returns are indeed heteroscedastic, with volatility behaving according to an ARSH process. For the Lung box test, the formula is slightly more complicated. We first need to multiply the number of observations by the number of observations plus 2, so let's do just that. Sample size times sample size plus 2, and then we need to multiply it by a weighted squared autoregressive coefficients. So we need to first input the autoregressive coefficient for the first lag length, so beta 1 squared, divided by the number of observations minus 1, where 1 is the number of a particular lag, plus the coefficient squared for the second lag, divided by the number of observations minus 2, to uh, means second lag, plus the third coefficient squared divided by the number of observations minus 3, where 3 signifies the third lag. And then we close the brackets again and enforce the formula giving us the long box Q statistic. And now we can just drag the p-value formula down to this cell and get a very similar p-value as well. It means that box pairs and loom box Q tests, given the fact that they are very similar conceptually and even computationally, give us very similar results in terms of heteroscedasticity presence in our silver return data. So we can very surely state that silver returns are indeed heteroscedastic and behave according to an ARSH process at least. And now, as a slight bonus, we can also test for ARSH effects in other functional specifications of volatility. If you recall, in our videos on heteroscedasticity test, particularly when we were talking about the Harvey test and the Gleiser test, we discussed that one needn't um, represent volatility as residual squared. For Harvey test, for example, we could represent volatility as the natural logarithm of residual squared, and enforcing this formula, we can effectively just apply the same logic to our heteroscedasticity test and see that even if you take the Harvey representation of volatility, that is natural logarithm of the squared residual, you still get remarkably high um, chi-squared statistics and the p-values that are less than 10%. So even in that functional form, autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity prevails. And finally, to test the Gleiser functional form, that is the absolute value of the residual instead of residual squared, we can again enforce this formula and have exactly the same values of the chi-squared statistic, uh, that is very high values of those, and very low p-values, similar to the ones we have obtained initially. And that's all there is for the Lung box and box pierce Q tests for autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, please leave more suggestions for further videos on business, economics, or finance you would like me to cover in the future. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click this bell notification button below. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.